Neutrinos are fundamental particles. They're, they're the lightest particles that we know about, um, and they're really everywhere. Uh, they're produced everywhere. They're produced in the sun, they're produced in the earth, they're produced um, by the food we eat. So neutrinos are really interesting because they're one of the most abundant particles in the universe. So if you want to understand how the universe was born, how it's evolving, what its eventual fate is, you need to understand the properties of the neutrinos. You need to understand what the neutrinos are doing in the universe. I mean, one of the reasons that neutrinos are so interesting is, be is because of this, this discrepancy between their enormous abundance and, in effect, our enormous ignorance about them. We really don't know a lot about neutrinos. We know neutrinos can exist in these three different flavor states, the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. But it turns out that that's not all there is to the neutrino. They not only have this characteristic called flavor states, they can also exist in mass states. We don't know what those masses are. That's what we're trying to figure out. You know, we're used to thinking of particles as these little marbles that you could hold in your hand. And if I gave you an electron, you could hold the electron in your hand. And if I came back at some later time and asked you what's in your hand, you would say an electron. Okay? And, and if I give you an electron neutrino and I ask you to hold that electron neutrino in your hand, I could come back later and ask you what is that electron neutrino. And you would look at it and you'd say, oh my goodness, it's a muon neutrino now. And I could come back at some later time and maybe it would be an electron neutrino again. That, that shape changing is what we call a neutrino oscillation. goals of NOVA is to study this, this oscillation, which is possibly quite rare. So the, the reason we study neutrino oscillations uh, is to get at the question of neutrino masses. The neutrinos are, are fundamental particles, and yet we still don't know something as basic as, as how much do they weigh. Because they're so light, they've evaded any attempt to measure their neutrino masses directly so far. And so what we've had to do is go to, to a sort of an indirect method, which is this neutrino oscillations. Neutrinos are either created or detected as one of the flavor states. So you're always going to detect an electron neutrino, a muon neutrino, or a tau neutrino. But as neutrinos travel from one place to another place, the important quantity is the mass state, the mass of the neutrinos. This is what gives rise to neutrino oscillations. Uh, the way neutrino oscillations work, one way I like to think about it is, is when you tune two instruments. When you tune two instruments, you play the two instruments simultaneously. And if there's any difference in pitch, they immediately sound out of tune. So these simple tuning forks are actually quite useful in understanding the phenomena of uh, neutrino oscillations. If we take that each fork is a neutrino particle, then their mass will determine the vibration uh, frequency. Now if they're the same, and you vibrate them next to each other, you hear no noticeable effect. Maybe it's just a little louder. However, if one of the neutrinos has just a tiny additional mass, it will change its frequency just a little bit, and a remarkable thing happens. And you hear a clear oscillation in their interference pattern. It's that oscillation pattern that we're measuring in neutrino physics experiments. We measure it very precisely, and it's how we know neutrinos have tiny, non-zero, but different masses. We're, we're allowing the possibilities that the neutrinos are an M1 state, or an M2 state, or an M3 state, to interfere with each other. And if there's any difference in the masses, that, that little bit of interference will produce something that in effect sounds out of tune. So you'll make, say, a muon neutrino, but then that neutrino propagates in its mass states. And the mass states can sort of mix as the neutrino propagates. And so when you get to the other end, to your far detector, say, 500 miles away from where you made the neutrino, the composition of the mass states will be different than it was when, when you started out. And so the uh, corresponding flavor state will be different. They're fundamentally these quantum mechanical beasts where all of the masses exist simultaneously um, and we don't know what pattern that, that those possibilities follow. Well, so NOVA is an experiment at Fermilab. Uh, we'll be using uh, neutrino beams at Fermilab to produce beams of both neutrinos and antineutrinos. What NOVA is looking at in particular is this oscillation from muon neutrinos to electron neutrinos. It's comprised of three main components. There is the accelerator and the beam line, which produces the neutrinos. We have an ear detector to sample the neutrinos that are produced. That's located here on site. And then we have a far detector located about 800 kilometers uh, north of here in Ash River, Minnesota. The reason we want to do it with both matter and antimatter is we, is we want to really see if there's this asymmetry between the, the matter oscillation and the antimatter oscillation. Why is the universe made out of matter 
and why isn't it made of antimatter? Or why is there such an abundance of matter and very little antimatter particles in the universe? There's a possibility that the neutrinos could explain this, this asymmetry between matter and antimatter. One of the things that I think is so interesting about neutrinos is that they've surprised us. And so, you know, one of the things I hope we get out of NOVA is, is more surprises. 